Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 6 globalization and social change from your textbook Social Change and Development in India. As we have already started discussing this chapter, this chapter is divided into four parts. So far we have discussed about the concept of globalization, features of globalization, how globalization affects our lives taking example from Indian society. We have also discussed in detail about economic dimensions of globalization in which we discussed about transnational corporations and transnational capitalist class. Within the context, we discussed about electronic economy, globalization of finance and knowledge of weightless economy. In this lecture, we will discuss about global communication and the rise of international division of labor. In the globalizing world with time and space compression, distances have become irrelevant. With tremendous intensification of social, political, economic and cultural interconnections and interdependence on global scale, boundaries have become increasingly permeable. Cultures and communities are no longer tight or limited by space or boundary. This is a world of virtual reality in which a new kind of non-physical space is existing. Globalization does not necessarily always involve economic causes and consequences. Also, it is not just unidirectional in nature, where the rich gets benefited and the poor countries are exploited continuously. In fact, there are many dimensions and directions of globalization that can be analyzed in different spheres, such as social, political, cultural and economic that we have discussed. In the subsequent sections of this chapter, we will try to identify some of the distinctive features of globalization in all these other areas. The second important dimension of globalization that we will discuss is global communication after global economy. Developments in the field of technology and advancement in telecommunication infrastructures have resulted in revolutionary changes in global communications. People are now increasingly getting connected with the wider world through multiple ways like telephones, mobiles, internet, electronic or emails and cable television. You can think of the times prior to communication revolution. People used to wait for weeks for some message or information to reach from relatives or family members located at a distance, say America or in Europe. The wait and anxiety was even more in these members if they were or the families were located in other countries. The technology now has literally led to compression of time and space. That means time and space have been reduced into a small box. Communication between people located at two different places has become very easy and instantaneous. Not just verbal communication, that is you talking to me over phone. Technology has helped an easy exchange of images, photographs, documents, audio and video files as well. Outsourcing an important element of globalization of economy has been facilitated only by this revolution in global communication. You can imagine as soon as you click a picture, you can upload it on your Facebook or any other social networking site. Your friends can have access to this photograph, video or any other document or audio clip all over the world. You know India has the second largest telecommunication network which means the number of telephone users are the second largest in the world. India has world's third largest internet user base with over 137 million users by the end of June 2012 as per the statistics. With such a broad user base, India is one of the fastest growing telecom markets. The industry has grown 20 times, 20 times in the last decade, last 20 years. From approximately 37 million subscribers in 2001, the industry has grown to over 846 million subscribers in 2011. India also has world's second largest mobile phone user base with over 930 million users as by the statistics of May 2012. The statistic shows that there has been a tremendous growth in the usage of cell phones. In fact, cellular telephony, that is what you call popularly as mobile phones, have grown enormously and cell phones are part of the life of the urban middle class youth. So much so that you cannot imagine your life without mobile phones now. Major sectors of Indian telecommunication industry are telephony, which includes landline and mobile phones, internet and television broadcasting. 
even this lecture that you are watching on television is a part of this major revolution into the field of telecommunication. Along with the commercial purposes that telecom revolution has fulfilled, an important social consequence of this revolution has been that this expansion has served a strong socio-cultural function for the users of telephones. Telephones fulfill the strong need to keep in touch with the family members. Much like train travel in India, the telephone is also viewed as a way of maintaining close family ties. In fact, it is more easy than travelling by train to know about the well-being of family members located at a distance. You can give a call and find about the well-being of your family members. The advertisements for telephone services also showcase the emotional bond where parents are talking to their children or grandparents are talking to their grandchildren, highlighting the close family bonds that exist between people and where mobile or telephone can serve as an instrument to be close to your family members even if they are located at a distance. You must be knowing that about a decade back, 10 years back, cell phone or mobile phones were considered as a luxury item that only rich could afford. Look at the situation now. It is within the reach of people even with moderate or low income. Even the use of cell phones have changed over time. Discuss the reasons why it has changed or why this change has happened. Think of the issues like is it because of the need to remain connected with your people or family members or is it just a commodity that we consume as it is promoted by the capitalist? Is the telephony helping in safety or is it just a fashion that people want to follow or a peer group pressure? As a sociologist, you must look at the answers of these questions. But as with the case of development or modernization, the expansion of telecommunication services have also been uneven in India. Some people live in a well-connected world, while some have limited access and large number of people have no access to it at all. This phenomenon is called as digital divide. Digital divide refers to the gap between those who have access and can benefit from digital technology and those who cannot have access or do not have access and hence cannot have benefit from the digital technology. Globalization has also resulted in emergence of international division of labor. International division of labor can be understood as the division of labor in which process of production is not confined to national territory or economies. And more and more routine manufacturing, production and employment is done in the third world countries. For example, contract farming in the agricultural sector and the outsourcing processes in the service sector. In international division of labor, production processes are relocated from the developed countries such as United States of America, Japan, Germany to developing countries. These developing countries are also called as newly industrializing countries. In Asia, in Latin America such as China, India, Brazil, Vietnam etc. This is also known as a global industrial shift. This shift is taking place because multinational companies search for such locations where they can cut down the cost of production. In newly industrializing countries, people are offered cheap labor. These companies are offered cheap labor, conducive working environment, tax benefits and large number of other concessions. To take advantage of these concessions offered by the government of NICs, that is newly industrializing countries, the big companies shift their production, particularly the labor intensive part of the manufacturing process to the developing world, where the cost of production is comparatively less or low. Growing international division of labor has also influenced employment and education patterns globally. How? Let us look at this aspect particularly. Globalization and the IT revolution has opened up new career opportunities. A large number of youngsters from urban middle class, instead of doing traditional degrees or routine courses such as graduation, BA, BCom, etc., are learning computers, management sciences, hotel management, designing, languages, and other practical skills that can fetch them good jobs in the service sector, such as working in call centers, BPOs, KPOs, that is knowledge processing organization, in marketing, finance, hospitality, industry, etc. With employment becoming global and labor going international, the work culture of organizations is also changing. This work culture is called as the corporate culture, which is also acquiring a global dimension now. 
Corporate culture describes the way in which a company is governed and aims to increase productivity and competitiveness by creating unique organizational culture and adopting management practices that influence motivation and productivity of the workers. For example, the spread of multinational companies and the opportunities opened up by the IT revolution in India has led to emergence of a professional class in the metropolitan city. This class works in the service sector. This is a class of upwardly mobile professionals working in software firms, multinational banks, accountancy firms, stock market, travel and fashion designing industry, entertainment, media and other such allied fields. The multinational corporations have a different work culture. They offer you many facilities and comfortable office spaces with individual workstations to the employees. A dynamic corporate culture is thought to enhance employee loyalty and it promotes efficiency. It also refers to a way the work is done. The chances of promotion and working conditions are very different in these new corporate cultures. People get exorbitant salary, that is, very good salaries. And they are the main clientele of the booming consumer industry. With rising purchasing power, they are now buying more as compared to the people who were buying less earlier. But being part of corporate sector, these professionals also have a very stressful work schedule. Sometimes they have to work more than 8 hours. They have to work for finishing the products within time. For that, they do not even look at the time or the number of days they are spending on a particular project. Thus, globalization can also be seen as a force that liberates you, but at the same time, it puts you under pressure as well. Talking about globalization as a liberating force, why do we call it as a liberating force? The kind of social, economic, political and cultural changes that have come about as a result of forces and processes of globalization we can notice that traditional structures and forms of stratification or traditional forms of inequality are being increasingly challenged or questioned. We'll discuss about example of emancipation of women here within this context. The defenders of traditional idea of cultural identity defend undemocratic and discriminatory practices against women in the name of culture. These practices could be like say defense of sati on one hand or dowry to defense of women's exclusion from education and participation in public life or even getting educated. Although in India, we have always been able to develop a democratic tradition and culture that allows us to define culture in a more inclusive and participatory fashion. However, forces of globalization and modernity are great levelers. These forces offer open opportunities to people irrespective of their socio-cultural affiliations. Yes. You may say it may also lead to rise in income or economic inequality in society. But it reduces socio-cultural inequalities and discriminatory practices because of their inherent characteristics. The process of globalization has also influenced women and their lives in many ways. One immediate impact of this influence can be seen in the field of employment of women. The expansion of IT and service sector in general has led to increase in employment opportunities available for women. It has also led to greater economic independence among women. Women constitute 20% of the total workforce engaged in IT sector. They are increasingly taking up jobs even in the sectors which were traditionally male dominated like engineering and legal profession. Globalization has also opened up prospects for higher education and quality education for women. But this opportunity to afford higher and quality education is restricted to only those sections who are economically well off and afford to pay a price for quality education. As we have discussed that the impact of globalization has been uneven, so is the case of the women. On one hand, globalization has opened up avenues for women to challenge the conventional stereotypes. They get educated, can take up employment and decide about their destiny to some extent. On the other hand, it has also negatively impacted the lives and livelihood of many women. Such as, with mechanization and preference for machine-made goods, the semi and unskilled women are losing their source of income and employment. For example, we discussed about the gum collectors in Gujarat, or women working in the silk weaving industries. It is not so easy and straightforward to say that globalization has positively or negatively influenced women's life in general. 
It is a matter of investigation which depends upon the case and the context in which we are trying to understand the impact of globalization. So we can conclude that globalization has brought about attitudinal changes in general regarding traditional social and cultural practices. Women have also got more opportunities. They have been exposed to global practices. But the nature and extent of this influence is quite uneven, asymmetrical across the sections of society. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture. We discussed about global communication, revolution in the field of information technology, and increasing intensity of global communication or communication at the global level. We also discussed about the international division of labor and its impact on employment patterns globally how it has led to development of employment opportunities for people and also how globalization has affected women's life in general. But it is not the one-way case that is either good or bad, positive or negative impact. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about globalization and political changes. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.